What's up music makers, it's Luke from Sojourner Tracks and before the drummers start sending me hate mail over that thumbnail, we love you and we appreciate you. The one time that my band decided that we were gonna play to a drum track instead of our uh, normal drummer who happens to be a human being but was away at boot camp, it was a complete and utter disaster, truly horrifying stuff, the stuff of nightmares. But for those of you who aren't lucky enough to have a drummer or maybe access to the equipment or the space to do live drums, I think Logic Pro Drummer does an amazing job at getting you production quality uh, virtual drumming. And I'm gonna get into it today, how you can get into the very beat by beat detail of Logic Pro's drummer and why I think it's the best songwriting tool that Logic or any other DAW for that matter has come up with in recent years. So we're going to dig into all of that. If you enjoy today's content, don't forget to give me that thumbs up and let me know that you liked it. Let's dig in. <laughs> to get started with Logic Drummer, the first thing we need to do is create a drummer track. And if we go up here to the Add Tracks button, we'll find Drummer on the top right. You could choose a genre at this point, but you don't need to. You just hit Create. It populates this region, looks a lot like an audio file, and uh, this little plus button will duplicate that as many times as you need. Um, and this is how you're going to build out your drummer track. Um, obviously, we're doing this without a musical context here, so um, how you do that um, will be different depending on your situation and your song. But uh, each one of these regions can be edited independently of each other with this interface, meaning that whatever changes you make to this region will not carry over to this region and so on. You can also chop these up um, and move them around uh, depending on your song's needs. So if this is your verse part, it means you can uh, make some changes in this interface and say this is your then your chorus. Um, you can change up the pattern then and the fills to give it a completely different feel. And um, that is going to be the way that you build out uh, a totally unique and custom drum track for your song. It's really, um, really, really great tool for doing that. And uh, if you look up here at the track name, it says SoCal. That is just referring to the drum kit that it pulled up by default. And then Kyle is how Logic personifies some of the style options that are available, which we will look at right now. If you go to your library tab and then scroll over, these are your genres, which are just um, some broad options. Um, if we click on rock, for example, like I said, now Kyle is representing uh, pop rock, the pop rock style, but there are also many others within the rock genre. So each drummer has a set of presets and if i change drummers the presets will change and these are just uh, sort of broad representations of some common patterns that you would hear within the style so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to find a pattern uh, that sort of fits my mood for right now and then we'll go with that we'll build upon that for the rest of this tutorial and we're just going to stick with kyle right now Kyle's my bud. We'll see what happens. I'm going to play through some of these. A new kicks. I like that. That sounds pretty groovy. We're going to go with that for right now. Uh, the next thing that I want to show you, you don't have to do this. Um, if you are happy there with that drummer and that um, preset and that drum kit, you can roll with that. But we are going to change the drummer and we're going to change the drum kit. So if you go in here to uh, this little settings drop down, you'll see keep settings when changing drummers and you'll see keep drum kit when changing drummers. So I'm going to select both of those. Now I can change the drummer and change the drum kit without affecting um, this pattern overall. 
So each one of these drummers is going to add a different spin on this pattern, but the, the gist of the pattern will remain the same. And uh, we can listen to that right now. So you can see like the snare and kick uh, pattern was essentially the same, but each drummer has their own different take on it. So by uh, making these selections here, you can you, know, you can flip through the different drummers without uh, messing up your pattern because otherwise, if you don't have those selected, moving between drummers is gonna uh, just give you uh, defaults within this pattern. It will default to one of uh, one of the that drummers. Uh, specific patterns. So now we can actually we we picked a pattern from Kyle in the pop rock, but we have Logan playing it, which I think is kind of cool. I liked his take on it a little bit better. And the next thing that you can do is change the drum kit. So if the SoCal drum kit isn't doing it for you, we can listen to some of these other ones. I kind of like the sound of that. Um, now we have we have picked a preset uh, for the pattern that we like. We got a drummer playing it that we like. We switched the drum kit to now fit uh, what we're going for. And you can see how this is kind of just building off of bigger ideas down to more and more detail, which is what I really love about this because it's not just a looper. Um, you can really get in here and make a custom unique drum track that fits exactly what you're going for or pretty close to it. Uh, let's get into the interface a little bit. The first thing that you come across is this XY pattern, which is pretty self-explanatory. Louder, softer, more complex, more simple. Um, so let's set that where we think it should go. You can hear the subtle changes that are happening there. Not overall, but um, just uh, you're getting more of the feel, more of the dynamics that you're going for. Uh, if you look to the right of that, this is where we can make some significant changes in the kit pieces uh, to what's actually being played. So obviously percussion, you've got a tambourine, a shaker, and uh, hand claps. And these sliders are essentially the amount of that, not in volume, but um, in subdivisions of the beat that they're being played on. And with the symbols, it's also which symbols are being played. So between the, the ride and the splash and the crash. So um, I'm gonna mess around with that a little bit um, with the uh, what's being played and then I will start moving around the slider until we find something um, that I like. I will note here that the cymbals and the toms and the hi-hats, those are sort of mutually exclusive things, so you can only have one of those selected at a time. But that is not to say that those other kit pieces will not appear. You'll still hear a crash, you know, coming in uh, to uh, a part. You'll hear it coming, uh, hear the toms in the fills and all of the stuff that you would normally expect out of uh, a, a standard drum part. This is just picking what what is the the pattern centering on? Centering on a cymbals, on, on uh, toms or hi-hat or what do you want? So uh, I'm gonna play through some of that and 
you can hear uh, the differences between those. You can kind of get the idea of how that works. It's the same for the kick and snare. Um, the only thing you need to be aware of there is that when you get down here, this uh, seven and eight are a little bit different. So seven is half time, which is what we're in right now. And eight would be double time. So if you're wondering where half time is, it's all the way down here at the end, which might be a, a little bit confusing. And then uh, just a quick note, this follow, if we check this follow box here, if say I had uh, something recorded already, if you're putting drums to a song that you already have recorded parts for, this can be really helpful. You can tell the Logic Drummer to follow an audio track. So if I had a bass in there or something, um, I could select that track and it would make subtle changes to the beat to make it feel like it's playing with that track. Really cool feature. Um, obviously fills, you've got less or more. You can add some swing um, on the eighths or the sixteenth notes. Um, and if you go to the details section, the feel, uh, it's a little bit hard to hear this without uh, musical context, but um, you know, you can either have the drummer play a little bit on top of the beat or a little bit behind. Um, again, just adding some more of that human element, that imperfection. This is not uh, MIDI notes that have been uh, exactly perfected and quantized. You can add some of those ghost notes on the snare, um, those little snare rolls and, and all of the other coolness elements of uh, drum playing. And uh, hi-hat, I usually leave this on automatic um, because you can you can select it to be always open or always closed, but if you leave it on automatic, it's more dynamic. That way, I find most of the time. The next thing that we're going to look at, now that you've got the interface um, basically covered, is the drum kit itself. Well, this is pretty cool. If you go over here to your channel strip on the top, it says drum kit. You double click on that. This is the Brooklyn drum kit. But we can take it a step further, and if you click on the kit pieces, we can actually change what the kit pieces are. And also on the right side, you've got uh, tuning and uh, dampening, gain, so you can change the balance of the kit as well. I really appreciate uh, that kick a lot more. Um, but again, this is a, a, another step that you can take it to really uh, customize what's going on in your drum part. And that leads me straight into my next favorite thing. For those of you who are mixers, this is especially cool. At the bottom of your drum kits, you'll find producer kits. And if we click on producer kits, you'll find all of the same kits that you're used to seeing in here. Um, but they have little plus signs next to them. So if I uh, were using the Brooklyn kit, for example, so if I hit, hit Brooklyn, this now changes to a drop down. So it's now a track stack and all of the kit pieces have been broken out into their own individual tracks, which is just amazing. Once you get to the, the mixing stage, you're gonna love this because you can now uh, treat uh, the kick and the snare separately. You can EQ them individually. And, um, you know, if you want to do different things with parallel processing or, or reverb or whatever it is that you want to do, the, the standard mixing stuff that you do with a kit that was recorded 
live. Uh, you can do here, you even get rooms, um, you get mic bleed, which is the leak channel here. Really, really detailed stuff, um, which leads me into uh, kind of back into where we just were. If you go down to the overheads, the overheads, for whatever reason, are considered like the main track now. Um, so you'll find the, the drum kit plugin actually in the overheads channel. Double click on that. Same sort of thing as we saw before, but this time we have a lot more options. So you can pretty much pick from anything in the Logic library. For, so you can uh, pick whatever kick you want. You can do the same now with the toms and the cymbals as well, which you can't do outside of the producer kits with the regular kits. So now we could, we could change the cymbals up. And then again, you get um, all of these controls, but you get them um, kind of expanded. Uh, you can turn the overheads on and off. You got a room, uh, two different rooms to choose from. So sky is the limit with the customization of the drum kit. And I feel like getting there with the, the pattern and the actual hits is, is fairly easy as well. You can really build out uh, anything that you need to suit your song with this program. And the last thing that I want to show you, um, just real quickly, kind of the the icing on the cake is, uh, you know, this is basically like a, a, a audio file that's being um, manipulated as you go through the interface. But you can uh, right click on this, go down to convert, and actually convert it to a MIDI region. And I, I wouldn't suggest you know get all of your uh, tweaking done in the Logic Drummer interface first, um, because now obviously we lost our access to uh, the Logic Drummer interface. Once you convert it to MIDI, you can't do that stuff anymore. You can always convert it back, but uh, now we have access to this drum pattern uh, on the piano roll. So if there was just, uh, you know, I wish that I love this drum pattern, but I wish there was a snare roll at the end. Um, you could just go in here and uh, add it in. So it's, you know, it's, it's literally that easy um, if you need to add a hit here or there, especially, you know, if you're trying to copy um, something in a song, you know, you're trying to match the rhythm of uh, guitars or, you know, it may be difficult to get there with the interface, but they have provided this option to change it to MIDI so that you can um, manipulate down to every hit. I hope this video will help you to really sink your teeth into what Logic Drummer is truly capable of, that you're able to create unique and interesting drum parts for your songs. And as always, don't forget to head on over to the website. You can pick up my Producer Proverbs Instagram series on there for a couple bucks as well as some other freebies. And you can join my Patreon page. I've got some goodies on there for my Patreons only. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.